Welcome to the October meeting of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. The first item on our agenda tonight is adjustments to the agenda. Does anybody on the board or Dr. Goldman have an adjustment to the agenda? Dr. Yes, um, at our September board meeting we called to your attention that we had uh, class divisions at the fourth grade level that were very tight and I said that we would be monitoring that situation. Uh, when I put the board agenda together, it was still getting some uh, data together, and at this point I would like to add a discussion and possible action on a request for an additional teacher at the fourth grade. Okay, we'll put that as letter D uh, under unfinished business. Okay, and I would like to... Oh, yeah. I, I would like to speak briefly under communications or some other appropriate spot. And we'll move item four, comments by high school and middle school representatives um, before the business manager's report tonight. Rosemary? Um, Madam Chairman, I was wondering if we could make that a permanent change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Then the kids can, can go back home. <laughs> go do their homework. <laughs> okay. Any other adjustments? All right. Approval of the school board minutes meeting of Tuesday, September 10th, 1991. Any additions or adjustments to that? Rosemary? Madam Chairman, I move acceptance of the minutes as presented. Okay. Any other 
The, the uh, minutes are approved. Stand approved is read. Okay, now the comments by the high school. Or let's start, I'm sorry, let's start with the middle school. <laughs> sorry. Madam Chair, while uh, the middle school representatives are approaching, could we vote on acceptance, please? Well, we don't have to vote on the oh, minutes. They can just, they're just approved. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> we can if you want, but we. <laughs> Yes, Which, can you introduce yourselves and um, welcome. Um, hello, my name is Christy Sternberg. I'm one of the newly elected school board representatives for the Cape Elizabeth Middle School. The sixth grade class earned $25,000 in the wrapping paper sale. Half of the money went to the Chwonky trip this coming April and the other half went to the company. There will be a seventh and eighth grade band trip to the Nelms. Un United, United Arts Conference on Monday, November 18th. Thank you. Hello, my name is Hello, my name is Lauren Gibbons and I am one of the school board reps for the middle school. The winners of the school election were Treasurer Kelly Allen, Historian Jared Mallett, President Chris Roberts, v Vice Presidents 7th grade Chad Collins, and sixth grade, Jonathan Sarbeck. Sixth grade rep will be Brooke Wigton and Ryan Tinsman, and the eighth grade reps will be Jason Allen and Allison Blood. Today, the seventh and eighth grades went to see Dr. Bias speak about drug abuse at St. Bartholomew's Church. Thank you. Thank you very much. High school representative. Okay, um, our year has gotten underway quite smoothly. Um, the SAC tentatively planned the retreat for the beginning of no uh, November, and we hope to have it in the, um, the house that the town council has purchased on Shore Road, which everybody's really excited about that. And it looks like we're going to get a lot accomplished then. Um, we have a lot of new blood in the SAC. We have Mr. Peary has replaced Dr. Hackett as our advisor and Jenny Higgins replaced Becky Kim as the SAC chairperson, as well as many new officers, um, upperclassmen officers that have joined the SAC. And it looks like we're going to have a lot of new energy this year and get a lot done. Um, we also have formed some new clubs, which is the Cultural, Cultural Exchange Club. And that um, is a chance for the exchange students to, and, and the students of Cape to um, learn about the cultures of different countries. And that's, that's headed by the new teacher, Mr. Brewington. And, the outing club which gives students a chance to go hiking and the Bartleby is um, going to produce be produced in-house this year by um, Mr. Lenoy and that's going to cut costs and that's it's looks really promising for the year Good. Courtney and I were pleasantly surprised yesterday morning to read the article in the paper about the hopeful improvement of our schools in the community dialogues However, we were a bit concerned, wondering about what students' role would be in this improvement plan, and also a little bit dismayed to see the word parent used so frequently and the word student pretty much forgotten about. As high school students, we're able to differ differentiate between good and bad. We know what classes we're being taught in and what classes simply contain busy work. Though we may not always be objective towards our teachers and our homework, we do know our needs and we know our own potentials. It's our hope that we be included in this process, that when reassessing our schools, we may be asked, what are your needs? Because more than the teachers and certainly more than our parents, we are the customers. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and I think that's, um, you know, I didn't write the article, although I think that it did capture the essence of what uh, our conversations, a number of us and the reporter. But for your information, I, the same thought had occurred to some of us, and I was talking to Mr. Miles this morning, as a matter of fact, and have given him a charge to, uh, in some way that makes sense to all of you at the high school, to put together a group of students or repeated groups of students, if need be, um, so that I and whoever on the board or whoever else is involved with pulling this together uh, do, in fact, get just exactly what you're talking about, the direct feedback from students. Uh, we couldn't agree with you more that um, not only are your perceptions valued, uh, but we understand that you are, in fact, at the heart of the customer chain, if you will. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, the next item is our business manager's report. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, on page 18 of your packet, you have an outline of the general program revenues for the period ending September 30th. To date, we have uh, budgeted revenues of 9.203 million with receipts of 2.355 or 26% 20 of our revenues are in as of September 30th. You will note that the uh, state has caught up to us. They are, in the month of September, we did receive two checks from the state. One was, the last one was September 30th, so we rushed to the bank with it and put it in the statements. Uh, the fall, and I wanted to note too, as far as the uh, Line 27, the miscellaneous receipts of uh, $27,058 to date. That does include the CMP rebate of $16,200 plus dollars. The following two pages outline the uh, general program expenditures for the month of the period ending September 30th. Again, to date of a budget of 9203, we have expended uh, 2,109,000 with encumbrances of 16,000 or a total expenditure budget of 23%. Next month we will uh, update the, the uh, encumbrances to reflect the, uh, the special ed tuitions. These only reflect the integrated arts as far as the artists and stuff. The following two pages I've enclosed in this month's packet uh, I guess from now on, on, on a month-to-month -month basis, we're going to highlight for you some of the accounts that are kind of iffy, so we'll draw some attention to them. Uh, what I'll be doing is, is probably put an asterisk next to these, so next month they might show up again in your report, but then we'll keep adding new, new uh, accounts and totals to, to accounts that are of concern. Any questions on the general program as far as the revenues or expenditures? Charlie? On well, this new addition to our thing on um, the K through five language arts eight seven one seven which was the reading recovery program. Yeah. Why is the the variance coming out of the supply account for for development or career development or whatever you want to call it or curriculum development? Uh, maybe somebody else can answer that for me. Uh, the only thing I was informed Charlie is that the the uh, when the program did take place that they the administrators got together and they pulled together a sum of money and this is the uh, the uh, items that they did identify as, as far as where they could possibly pull the three thousand dollars along with two thousand dollars coming from uh, federally funded programs mm. I th the conversation with um, last spring on this when the opportunity came up um, obviously looking at the budget knowing that there could be some transfer of that Frankly, I think what, what we should be doing is putting it all in the salary account and then we can, and I would prefer to see it carried in the personnel account attributable either to the direct salary account or to the conference <coughs> workshop staff development accounts, whichever would make more sense and we can talk about which one. Sure. Um, I think that particular conversation was simply trying to assure, and when I was talking with them, as well as any, and I think we had at least some informal conferences with the with the board on that, that we were not going to be going over budget, that that sacrifice could be made at that point if necessary in order to cover that. Um, but it probably does more appropriately belong in the, uh, even if we show an overage. Uh, the following, page 21, highlights the uh, federal and state programs or grants that we anticipate for 91-92. Uh, to date, we have uh, balances or applications and received approval for $199,733 worth of grants. We have received $81,261 in, in actual revenue, and we have expended $21,393. Again, a lot of these are on a year-by-year -year basis, and they do get mostly all expended during the course of the year. The following two pages highlights the uh, food service program for the period ending September 30th. Uh, note that uh, line 10 on page 22, we have transferred $19,136 out of the $25,000 appropriation 
to start the year with a zero fund balance or a even fund balance. Uh, for the month, counting the 19,000, they did have revenues of 53,009 with expenditures of 32. They had a net income or loss for the month of 25, less than 19,000, naturally. Receivables are of $2,527. I think the next page kind of highlights the food service program as far as the fund balance. I just, before the meeting, uh, came out with some other numbers just to highlight you as what's, what's happened to the fund balance the last three years. In June of 89, the school lunch fund balance was a, was a positive $10,827. In June of 1990, we had a negative $23,345 fund balance, or a swing in that year of $34,172. This year, we ended the year with a, a negative $19,136 fund balance, but actually, compared to last year's 23, it's a positive flow of $4,209. But keep in mind also that with the transfer of the 19136, you we have, uh, $5,864 left in the general fund to fund the school lunch program for 91 92. Charlie? Why didn't you transfer the whole $25,000? Why? Cause, well, I, th I thought through, through February, March, April, and May when we brought up the school lunch program, I was under the impression that the board kind of gave us some directives as, as of June 30th or September 1st, start with a zero fund balance so you'll know what's happening during the course of the year. If okay. Well, I'm with Charlie. I, uh, I thought you would have transferred the whole uh, 25,000. Okay. And uh, I think to, uh, to present the 19,000 as part of revenues is uh, somewhat confusing. No, I think what is. we want to know up here is sales versus expenses. We know we have $25,000 in our budget to subsidize this program. I think we, what we want to see is each year how quickly we're eating into that 25000 Okay. I think, uh, excuse me, I think there's another issue here. I had a conversation uh, with you about this in order to make sure that, that I was seeing the, the picture correctly over a period of time. Um, I remember a discussion we had uh, as to when the board commitment gets added and, and what have you. The 19000 that you see here is actually taking care of the deficit from last year. In other words, what Correct. is in the 9192 budget is basically 19000 of is making up the deficit for last year. It's one of those situations that you uh, apparently started this cycle at some point when you had a deficit. And so your first contribution went to make up the deficit in the preceding year. So in fact, what we now have, we have used out of this year's 91-92 appropriation, we've used 19,000 to wipe out the deficit from last year. You know, I think the point that uh, some of us have been making now, I can't even remember how long, but uh, it's a long time, isn't Two it, Charlie? Years. Two okay. years. We want to start each year de novo. We want to end each year in closing out all subsidiary fund balances uh, and taking them to the general fund so that a program like this very clearly starts out with uh, a zero balance but a $25,000 subsidy, if you will, or a fund. And that could be taken in uh, either on the first day of the year. Uh, that could be taken into this account uh, Twenty-five thousand divided by twelve each month, or uh, twenty-five thousand divided by nine, whatever you know, the, the school year versus the calendar year. Uh, and I just think we ought to do that. And it just seems to me, Charlie, I, I see you nodding. Uh, we've been trying to do this for a long time. My question would be, what do you want to do with a nineteen thousand dollar deficit from last year? Well, I, we should have closed it out and uh, applied it to last year's results. Now, I assume it's, what it is, it's. Uh, it appears in some carry forward. Uh, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, Peter. But the deficit, by the time the audit is done, it, it's only in August. See, I think what you're saying is probably reality for this year, because if we keep on the same track as we were in '90, '91, hopefully the school lunch will come in with a positive net fund balance or cash flow. Hopefully. 
Well, I, I say let's make a deal. Let's let's <laughs> put the remaining five or six thousand dollars in there right now. Okay. And let's all agree that at the end of the year, wh whether that's a plus or a minus, it goes back. Okay. Into the into the general fund for our overall school operations, and we start next year's program zero okay. Okay, with whatever the board decides in the way of a subsidy, twenty-five thousand or fifteen or fifty, whatever it is. Okay, I, I follow. If we would have done that though, as of June thirtieth of last year, we would have had the twenty-five that we appropriated last year and and transferred plus the nineteen. That would have been forty-four thousand dollars. You know, I. The, the blunt is, is over two years. I think we're over, hopefully we're over the, the deficit side. But, you know, if you want to do that, that's no problem. We will transfer the 25. Any other questions on school lunch? Charlie. I think the consensus of the board was to treat the hot lunch program like we treat all our other accounts. And at the end of the, the fiscal year, you close it out, whether it's a, a deficit or it's a profit. And, and start over. And that was the only way we could get a handle on exactly how much we were actually losing or we were making. That's a very good suggestion, and it's very simple. Just make it another budget account. No, no problem. I understand. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the following three pages outline the community Sorry. services. Before you get to those, Excuse I me. have another concern back on the monthly update expenses. I'm a little concerned about how much we've already spent in legal fees and we're only about 30% through the school year. And considering the amount of money, I know they were extenuating circumstances last year, but we did spend a considerable amount of money that we did not budget. And it appears that we've already spent almost half our legal budget already. And we haven't even got it into negotiations and other things that will be taking place this year. That concerns me. Uh, and I think I throw it out as, as a concern when we go into next year's, when we go into budget hearings for the next fiscal year that we take this into account. We may be budgeting too low. I think uh, there is one point, though. I, I think that uh, most of our negotiating teams are going to be uh, repeat teams, seasoned people. Uh, I think we'll probably use the lawyers somewhat less. Uh, page 23B, uh, Community Services. For FY92, they, they anticipate a total budget of $477,000. To date, they have received or collected $229,386 and have expended $159,737. The enrollment uh, report for October 1st, and uh, this report is half of the, the numbers that the state uses for uh, subsidy purposes as far as the uh, pupil count. Uh, at the high school this month, we have 403 students, 372 at the middle school with 849 in the K-5 program for a total of 1,624 compared to 1,619 for last month. And naturally, where the increases are where your, your class sizes are already high. Uh, this compared to April 1st, April had 407 students at the high school, 338 in the middle school, and 830 in the uh, K-5 program for a total of 1,575. So we're up quite a few students. The following pages gives you a brief outline as to the... Uh, uh, energy usage as far as electricity, fuel, oil, and uh, the buses. And what I'll be doing the, uh, next month is I'll, I'll take the, uh, the bus schedule and the uh, fuel oil and make one recap sheet for you people and keep the others as backup. We're still, uh, we've contacted CMP because we have a concern about our usage as far as the uh, total kilowatts used for the summer, July and August. We're up 25,800 kilowatts compared to last year. And with the energy management system, this should, this should not be happening. So what they're doing, they're going to send us a printout of July and August with every 15-minute interval so we can pinpoint where, where the usage occurred. And also, the demand is up a little bit also. 
Yes, Mary? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, D, some of that uh, consumption of uh, electricity, I think, was due to construction? Uh, we had uh, the engineer look at that, and very little can be allocated to that because, you know, a skill saw here and there is not much. What uh, he's looking at is probably outside lighting it might be a factor. I meant asbestos removal. Didn't that take a lot of energy? Mm -hmm. huh? not, I'm not aware of it as far as how much. Like I said, when we get the printouts from CMP, then we can sit and look at something happened somewhere. Because what's happened is that the Pond Cove is only up 71 kilowatt hours, the Lund School is up 280, and the Middle School High School, which is you know the big user, is up 25,800 kilowatts for two months. That's if that's an indicator, we have some problems here. Charlie, we haven't split those yet. I thought we were going to be able to split and be able to know which the, was high school and which was the middle school. The problem is right now with. We're trying to, to control the demand limiter. They're having a problem with, with splitting them. They have, <coughs> put, they have put the meters in place, but by controlling the demand, they're having a problem. They've, they've been in and out of that building for the last month or so. Uh, right now, the demand limiter, so we, we cannot set the demand limiter right now so they will control both the middle school and the high school. It is set up for the high school. They're trying to convert it so that they can control, you know, both meters. The problem is that we have one meter that, that we're built on, but yet we're splitting up the, the usage amongst two buildings. Uh, it would just be really interesting to know if it's due to demand because of one building being used more than the other or if there's a loss, a waste of energy. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking in particular because of the middle school and the space study committee that's going on and mm -hmm. looking at those two. This would be very interesting. Hopefully, cause this, yeah, and hopefully the system that we do have now does give us a daily printout at, at the schools. But it, you know, the, see when we get their their billing as far as their 15-minute uh, interval, then we will be able to compare. I'll get back to that for the for next month's meeting for sure. Uh, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Dee. Okay, the next item on our agenda is communications. Dr. Goldman, do you have any? Well, I want to call to your attention, and unfortunately I only have one copy, so I, I, I will pass this around, but I don't have uh, more than the one. This is uh, a book that ha booklet that has been uh, recently published by the University of Southern Maine, particularly on assessment. It's called Conversations About Assessment. And I particularly wanted to share it because uh, both Nancy Hutton and uh, Barbara Powers and Lynn Evans have articles in this. This is a uh, compilation of proceedings for, that came from a um, workshop or a series of workshops on assessment. Uh, gives you uh, a good snapshot glimpse of some of the things that are going on in the field, particularly through the uh, partnership. And just want to call your attention to the fact that uh, actually both of those groups received um, grants for continual work and you will be hearing more about those assessment projects so I'll, I'll just pass that along and congratulate the teachers and administration who were involved with that and look forward to seeing more. I understand that uh, the contributors to the book, Nancy, you have a copy. They gave the superintendents a copy and they told me all the other copies were five dollars a piece. <laughs> so um, that I have one. <laughs> But anyway, congratulations to all of you who participated. It's a really an interesting book, and I know it's only the beginning. We will have more. Okay. Peter? Thank you, Madam Chairman. I was embarrassed to miss the uh, September meeting, and uh, I'm even more embarrassed to uh, miss the November meeting, and I thought I would share with you the reasons. Uh, as you know, I was recently appointed to a national commission uh, on uh, financing higher education in America. And uh, one of the first things I did was inform the commission the dates in which I would not be available. And I dutifully put in every Tuesday, uh, second Tuesday, and every fourth Tuesday. And uh, the way things work, I discovered, I'm beginning to discover how things work in Washington. They assumed that I could leave here at 11 o'clock at night and turn up in Los Angeles or Miami or Wichita, Kansas for a 9 o'clock meeting the next morning. So uh, I... Uh, since I was the only commissioner so inconvenienced, I decided not to make a fuss of it, but I do apologize for those two absences. My first two, I must uh, 
point out. I don't think I've ever missed another one, and I don't intend to miss any after these two. Uh, I also want to share with you uh, just one piece of testimony which I thought was particularly interesting uh, from our meetings out at Northwestern University a few weeks ago. Uh, the, uh, these meetings draw university presidents and CEOs and senior executives of, of major corporations, uh, local and state officials, educators, and uh, uh, quite often students and their parents. And one gentleman, uh, he, his name is Edward Bales, he's uh, connected with Motorola, uh, came and I'd just like to quote a few of the things that he said because they do speak so clearly to some of the things that we've been doing here and that we've been uh, discussing. But, uh, as I listened to Mr. Bales speak, I kept thinking of Kirk Pond, who uh, is a senior executive of uh, National Semiconductor, a, uh, another international company, an American company, which uh, competes successfully in the highly technical electronics field around the world. And uh, because I've heard some of these, uh, I've heard Kirk Pond say some of these things. So let me just quote very briefly and then we'll go back to our business. And I did bring copies of this in case uh, any of you would like to read it. So I'm quoting Mr. Bales. I am here representing a major customer of the post-secondary educational system, the private sector. We view the mission of that system to be the development of students who are socially responsible in a global environment, employable in the workplace of tomorrow, capable of lifelong learning. At the present time, we are dissatisfied customers because the education system is not fulfilling its mission when viewed from this perspective. This system is doing an excellent job meeting the needs of a society that no longer exists. The industrial society was one where the output was goods the strategic resource capital, and the energy source fossil fuel. Today we are in the information or technology society where the output is information, the strategic resource is knowledge, the energy source is the mind. For instance, in Motorola today, our needs are for employees who have learned to learn, have crit critical thinking and problem solving skills, can work as participative members of teams, and have developed work habits which make them responsible members of these teams. When these criteria are used to measure the quality of the output of our education system, we find the product to be totally unacceptable. We have brilliant engineers who cannot communicate. We have financial analysts who have never learned to participate collaboratively as a member of a team. And we have research scientists whose great ideas are lost because they have not developed the ability to persuade others to evaluate their proposals. We have managers who have no understanding of the power of cultural diversity. Such deficiencies can no longer be tolerated. And I thought that was a particularly strong statement. And I kept thinking of you know, our emphasis on collaborative learning, on teams. And I, it really confirmed to me that we're going in the right direction. Just a couple of more. He said, the system must be customer driven. I think that's something that we've said many times. And then finally, something that Connie Goldman has uh, been uh, introducing here and speaking about practically since uh, she hit the ground with her feet running. We are involved with several universities who are introducing quality concepts into the administrative functions of their organizations. They are truly focusing on reducing waste in the way work is done. These efforts must be commended. However, very few have even begun to focus their attention on improving the quality of teaching. So those are just a few excerpts which, uh, and I did make copies in case uh, any of you would like to read that, but uh, I thank you, Madam Chairman, for the time. Thank you, Peter, and I, I hope you'll keep us updated about the research and the, and the results of, of the findings of the committee, and because it's certainly something that all of us should be aware of and, and be thinking about. And this might be something that uh, we should read at one of the Common Core meetings because it certainly, as you said, fits right in with, with what we're trying to do here. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, Superintendent's report. Thank you. Uh, it's really uh, interesting stuff. Thank you, Peter. Uh, speaking of the Common Core meeting or the community dialogues, um, the first item on my report is to call to your attention that in our attempt to schedule the calendar for the year, 
uh, we simply systematically put the fourth Tuesday of the month on the calendar as a <coughs> workshop. Clearly, November 26 probably needs to be either rescheduled or possibly even canceled because we are planning not only two uh, workshops in or one community dialogue and a workshop with the town council in October, plus three of the community dialogue meetings coming in November in addition to your regular November workshop. And somewhere in there, I believe there's a Thanksgiving break. Um, so I would suggest to you that you might want to simply uh, cancel that or you can leave your options open to reschedule if you wish, but that I suspect that we'll be pretty busy. Um, if you, you don't have to take a vote on it, if you want to indicate that you agree with me, give me some sense of consensus, um, I will assume that we've already scheduled that. I agree. Okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd like, to, I don't want to cancel. I, I, it, it doesn't have to be in November, but I'd like to reschedule. Okay. Um, and then, uh, obviously, moving on, yes, there was an article in the paper yesterday, which I think came because uh, a newspaper reporter had attended our October workshop and then called me as a follow-up to ask about um, what were some of the aspects um, of these uh, community dialogues. Uh, we certainly do want to encourage the um, community to come out. Uh, we're trying to make those flyers available. We will be sending some home to students. We know that not every student takes them home, but um, since the, we've had some um, newspaper uh, coverage through the Courier and through the Portland paper, we're hoping that we're, um, that, that message is getting out there. Uh, I am aware that asking people to come in a busy schedule and uh, spend four evenings or three evenings if you choose not to go to both of the smaller group meetings, um, talking about sort of uh, almost in the Star Trek sense uh, to go where no one has gone before uh, only appeals to certain kinds of people. Uh, but we assure you that we will not be any more uh, Star trek -y than at least to lay that out there because we really want good concrete suggestions. However, we're using the term visioning to try to suggest that this is a time to look beyond some of the immediate concerns of this year. We hope to offer many opportunities for parents to speak with their children's teachers as well as come together in specific groups on specific issues. And we, we really suggest that this is a time for us to try to respond to some of the issues in the uh, piece that Peter's calling our attention to and to <coughs> the statements in the, st um, the document known as the Common Core. We are making, uh, we're running off 100 copies of the Common Core. Uh, we have given a copy through the State Department to each of the board members to uh, all of the staff. Um, there may, in fact, be a few extra copies in the buildings, and I have two or three left in my office. But very soon we will have copies in my office, and then at our first meeting we will have, we hope, enough for everybody, and we, um, it's not a copyrighted item. We can keep running it off. So please feel free to call us, ask us for copies if you would like before the meeting, and they will be available at the 22nd. I really am looking forward to this. Um, both from the community and from the staff. We've had um, excellent support and interest. Um, you never know what will happen, but uh, we are really enthusiastically looking forward to this opportunity. Any questions? Or I just have an observation, Madam Chairman. Um, for the members of the public, if anyone didn't see that article, I did keep a copy, so if you call me, I will send you a copy. Also, the fact that it made the front page of the paper uh, indicates it is uh, of a lot of importance to a lot of people. So I do hope people will take this effort seriously and hope uh, that the public joins us for these meetings. And uh, I'm, I'm glad the students mentioned the student component because, uh, as I say, that, that is a very important piece and um, glad to have it there. Okay, moving on, the next item, I included in your packet a memo from Nancy St. John, um, also uh, from Beth Henderson, the administrators at Pine Cove. Uh, but it features, uh, since it's featuring a fifth grade issue, um, it does come from, uh, directly from Nancy. Uh, what uh, is an issue for anybody who didn't see that memo is that uh, we do offer band uh, and music, or that is musical instruments as an option for the regular music program. 
Uh, however, one of the issues that is particularly difficult, and in my conversation with the teachers and uh, administration on this, I gather it has been a growing issue. Uh, the good news is we have a lot of youngsters who want to have an instrument and to be involved. The bad news is it's very difficult to find a slot of time where I think we have close to 100 youngsters who have indicated interest in an instrument. When can we put them together so they begin to practice as a band? Um, the memo that we distributed pointed out that uh, we have two problems. One is the time at which you can appropriately pull youngsters out of classes. Uh, which is an issue we talked about in uh, the budget session last year and one that we'll no doubt be talking about again, how much can you get into any one schedule. Um, the other issue is that our band person, Tony Boffa, is shared between the middle school and the intermediate school so that between the student schedules and the teacher schedules we have a good deal of complexity. The suggestion is that we uh, go with our regular, the regular music program, which does include the choice of instrumental music, and as the year progresses, they're not ready to do the band now anyway, as I understand it, but as the year progresses getting into that, we are really saying we would like to uh, suggest the possibility of having that uh, before school. Uh, we can see a slide in Tony's schedule where that would be possible. Uh, we know that some parents do, in fact, transport their children to school uh, regularly or could, in fact, manage that once, what would it be, once a week? Once a week. Once a week. Um, and then there are the middle school um, youngsters at that level could take the middle school bus. Now, we do know that there is a, an issue as far as how many kids could take the bus. It's a large number of youngsters. We don't happen to know exactly where they live, and uh, until the day comes when we try to put them on the buses, we'll find out, I suppose, what the crunches are, we could look at that and see if there was some possibility of adding um, some transportation to alleviate that crunch. Uh, certainly we don't want to discourage anybody from participating in, in the band, uh, but it does seem to be a practical consideration and one that I do know is done in other communities, uh, particularly at this age level, um, and we are making that as an administrative suggestion. If you feel that you understand and concur, you don't need to take a vote on it, you may if you wish. I put it under report rather than a voting item because in many cases I see it as an administrative issue, but because it is changing our practice and because it is in fact impacting some parents' schedules uh, and something that I thought you needed to know about and talk about, we, I'm giving you an opportunity to give us some direction. Comments, Charlie? I think this, this recommendation, which, which probably served a need for finding time in a very busy schedule, I just think that this particular, particular memo was, was not very thorough in giving exactly what she wanted. Um, it was, I found it very misleading. I found the, found the amount of allocated time was not, was misleading. and. Also, the understanding of band and chorus as, as part of the music program as, as, as misleading. Because my understanding was that fifth graders made a choice. They all took music of some sort, whether it was general music, chorus, or band. The way this memo came out, it looked like chorus and band, per se, would be offered before school. I think there were a lot of uh, misunderstandings as a result of that. I think some of it's been clarified that this had to do with a one time a week total fifth grade band uh, practice time, not the individual uh, lessons that they have. I think it's once a week. Is it once a week or twice a week? But they have music one, once a week. So that, that element of their, of their allied arts program would still be in effect. This is just, okay. Um, I have a question about the 99 students and the parents who entered into agreements to rent, lease, or buy musical instruments. And uh, is there an escape clause for these parents <laughs> if they are unable to or unwilling to transport their kids to school before school for this since it was originally offered during the day? Do you know? Well, as far as the escape clause goes, I don't know. That's something we'd have to check with Tony. And uh, 
I'm sure I'd be able to get back to you on that and address that issue, Rosemary. I, I do apologize for not asking that question before, but I thought about it on the way here tonight. That's no problem. That's a very good question. Other questions or comments? Okay. Is it the consensus of the board that this is a viable thing to do? Uh, I would like to make a comment that I would very much like to see this for a one-year uh, uh, commitment and for us to really assess this and see if perhaps there might be another alternative. I am not suggesting what that might be. I do think that this is very workable. I did uh, speak with some bus drivers about um, the bus pickups and whatever, and it seems to be only one bus that might be overloaded, and there's certainly another bus that could go out on the appropriate day to pick up the um, band uh, and chorus students. So in terms of that aspect, it seems to be very, very manageable. Also, I'd, I'd like to state that this has been an issue that has been uh, discussed year after year after year, and I do want to say that I, I'm thrilled that someone uh, brought it to the board's attention now and that we are addressing this four to six weeks before uh, the event so that there's some planning time to make the transition easy. Or Other comments? Peter? Yeah, I'm willing to go along with it. I do have some reservations and I have uh, discussed uh, our band program, which I think is a particularly strong program with Nancy St. John and with Nancy Hutton because I viewed the intermediate units uh, program as a feeder for our middle school band and uh, chorus, which are very strong programs. I hope that uh, as we look at the budget and we look at our scheduling for next year, we can find uh, the way to decide which programs are going to be offered before and after school in a, in, a, uh, in a global sense, looking at everything at the same time rather than just looking at this particular uh, scheduling problem. But I'm willing to, uh, as I say, join the consensus. Charlie? I really can't join the consensus at this time because I think there's some unknown t intangibles out there. One of them is the number of students that will be taking fifth grade band. That's an uncertainty right now. I would like to see some kind of a survey of parents who have children involved in that program to see what impact this will have on them as far as extending the child's day, which does extend it a half an hour to 40 minutes. And, um, and I would like to see how it's going to impact the transportation situation, so therefore I cannot support at this time. Uh, would it be possible to table this until the next board meeting, which is two weeks before implementation would have to be made, so that further brainstorming and um, attention to those details outlined by Mr. Greer could be addressed? Well, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that, that it seems to me that if there, there is a consensus that's a majority, that we should go ahead with it. I think, like, as you said before, that the, that the preparation time and the notification time for parents is important. If we table it, then nobody's going to know for another month. Well, we could certainly uh, pick up on the idea of sending a letter home and getting some feedback back uh, to see what that is. I think um, the reality is I don't know when we would put it in. I mean, I, again, I'm somewhat new to the issue, but in listening to the discussion, I went over to the uh, meeting. I think all the people involved were there. Um, frankly, I don't know what else we're going to do. I mean, it really, for 99 kids, it really is not a, a real good solution. Uh, and even if we could put the youngsters together, um, we have a real problem with the shared staffing situation. And I certainly don't think it would be appropriate to be talking about hiring somebody to come in for that one, one piece. I mean, this is an example of a situation where you have two buildings in a contiguous setting, which is somewhat seductive in that you think you can share staff nicely because they only have to walk from one end of the building to the other, as opposed to getting into a car and driving 10 miles, as often happens in elementary schools and systems where you have separate elementary buildings. Uh, you know you can't share a person one time a week uh, under those circumstances, or very rarely do you make that kind of decision. You look at it from a staffing point of view, and most likely a decision would be no band at the fifth grade level. You'd start in the building where you have that person and stretch them as far as you can. 
Um, I think we, I still have, I'm sure, many of these pieces to discover, but I'm finding as I look at the scheduling and thinking about the budget uh, proposals as well as some curriculum issues for next year, we have this sort of little sharing piece back and forth, which on the one hand is very handy, but on the, on the, the back side of that is that it looks like we're stretching one person like a rubber band, and there's a point at which you can't. And my suspicion is, from what I know of the situation, that if we're going to have band all together, it almost has to be at the beginning of the day like this. Now, that may suggest, um, I certainly believe we do need to contact parents. I think that's really important, and I know we're more than willing to do that and try to explain our dilemma and ask people's input. Um, it certainly suggests some review in the budget process for priorities and so forth. Well, priorities not yeah. just financial, but also priorities of programs. Exactly. Uh, but because it may uh, some people, uh, you know, we've had turnouts here for various programs. Sure. Maybe we'd have a, uh, a turnout for band that would knock your socks off. I don't know, but you see the number of people that went to the middle school band concert. That's right. Uh, it was pretty impressive. The issue, however, oftentimes in these discussions is when do you start it? Um, and that grade level starting is tied to children's schedules as well as the person, the staff person's schedule, and that's really what we're, the crunch that we're in right now. But it, it, I don't think, for our purposes, I, maybe I should ask Nancy, I don't think that this would be, uh, that's why it's really not here as a, a vote object, it's more uh, item, it's more discussion item to get a feel from you as to where you are, what your concerns are, uh, we're more than happy to go back and ask parents and share and see what kind of feedback and to bring this back again. If you we can discuss for the agenda for next month, whether it should be a vote item or, or a discussion item, where are we, what are the issues. Um, but I think that's we're giving you a sense of what the problem is as we're, we're seeing it. If there is time urgency, uh, there is an alternative, and that is uh, we could simply delegate uh, the superintendent uh, the decision. And after uh, contacting parents and after looking at the, uh, and we'll all second guess you, whatever it is, <laughs> uh, looking at the transportation, looking at the needs of the parents, et cetera, you could simply, if the decision has to be made in two weeks, sure. it could see, or you okay. could make it in conjunction with the uh, board chairman, but just throw that out. Madam Chair, having had three children involved in the instrumental music program, I don't see that there's a sense of urgency right now. These fifth graders are not going to be ready perform together as a fifth grade band for a couple of months. So I think it could stand a little more study, even if it's just a month more. Hmm. Other thoughts? I'm in favor of anything that gives more instructional time. <laughs> so just from that standpoint alone, I, and I think that we need to be making choices as families and, and that uh, it, you know, whether to come in before school would be you know, a family discussion matter. And, and I, you know, some may say no, but uh, I, I think, you know, we're, we're at the point with this many um, different possibilities for extra courses outside of just the general curriculum, you know, choices have to be made. And I think it's, it's commendable that, that they were willing to come in and offer their time before school, Mr. Balfa and uh, Ms. Wayne. Mark, did I hear you say that? I second. <laughs> I, I agree with that yeah. as well. We feel that this is perhaps a way that we can manage to invite numbers of youngsters to continue to participate while we do admit that it is prior to the school day. Both Tony and Rebecca, uh, Tony Boffa and Rebecca Wing are extremely supportive of this proposal and they themselves met with us and brought the proposal forward. Um, if what we're discussing <coughs> comes to reality, that is, if we postpone it, absolutely we could postpone the, ins the uh, band practice portion, but chorus, we're hoping to get that underway in the near future. Peter, where do you stand as far as tabling it or going forth with it? 
Why are you signaling me <laughs> out? Well, because we have two members that want to. Is this a question of seniority, <laughs> gray hair, or what? Yeah. Can I, <laughs> you decide, Peter. Yeah, it's Madam Chair, we can have I clarify? Chairman, I'm not against this. Mm -hmm. I see some logistics that have not been worked out, and that's the transportation issue and how it's going to impact parents. We're asking for a community dialogue and parent involvement. And this is a decision that impacts parents because it involves their children being here half an hour earlier, which extends their day. I don't see the urgency of not at least going back and coming back with some concrete, this is how we can handle it. We can handle it through the transportation needs, and we can handle it because there seems to be sufficient parent backing. I'm not how, how soon does course, how soon does this impact course? Well, course historically would start probably in the next week to two weeks. That's what we've done in the past. Well, I, uh, I will answer your question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> levity aside, uh, I still am essentially where I was when I said I would reluctantly go along with the consensus. However, noting that there doesn't appear to be a consensus, uh, there's not much to go along with. Uh, so it seems to me there's a choice between uh, tabling the motion and bringing it up in the November meeting or uh, since it is arguably an administrative matter delegating uh, the decision to the superintendent uh, you know with or without at your discretion the board chairman's uh, uh, participation and I, I guess I uh, would argue for the latter uh, I think that uh, Charlie makes a very good point I think we ought to get some parent input on this and make sure that we're not just making a decision without consulting them and, and letting them know, finding out for how many uh, children it would make a difference. And uh, I should think you could do that in a couple of weeks. And uh, if it's fairly clear at that point, you could make the decision. And maybe uh, you, know, you would want to call the members of the board uh, to see if then there is a consensus. But I, I sense right now there isn't one. I would back Peter's proposal. I think what, what we needed was some sense, uh, again, uh, to have a, a public discussion of the issue. It seems to be one that has been of concern to staff. If I might summarize, I believe that I hear from you an understanding of our problems. Um, we certainly hear from you the need to uh, contact parents in a systematic way um, to make sure that we have, in fact, continued uh, what Rosemary has started, the checking on, on bus schedules, that type of thing. Um, and uh, make sure that we have, in fact, looked at all our options, but I believe we have. And I appreciate the fact that I hear you uh, realizing um, the difficulties that we're having in trying to fit a lot of things in. And uh, when I talked to staff, they had some concerns in, that were expressed partly in, this, in the feeling of, gee, we really want to do everything. We just don't know how to do it. And neither do, I mean, I think I hear the same concerns from you. So we'll go through the process. and. In the meantime, on, with the understanding that uh, if we need to make some immediate executive administrative decisions, we will do that and report back to you. But in the larger picture, getting in touch with parents and giving you some feedback on that, we will continue to work on that. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on, traffic flow with the high school. You may recall last um, spring, we had a discussion uh, in various ways at the request of some uh, changes that were going to be made in the town. Uh, principally closing off Jordan Way. Um, we made some, the town has made some ordinance changes as far as traffic flow through uh, uh, the middle school uh, Pond Cove area. Uh, to my knowledge, it seems to be working rather well. I haven't heard any complaints about it and I've gone out and looked at it. I don't see anything going on. Uh, it's possible that there are some, some glitches that I'm not aware of. But we are seeing some problems at the high school. I think. Um, I've had a few calls and some of you as uh, board members have either been involved in the traffic or uh, possibly um, been involved with conversations with, uh, with school. We'd like to take the opportunity to summarize very briefly what we're doing and both uh, Mr. Miles and uh, Mr. DeFusco have been involved in this discussion are here and I, I understand that uh, Rosemary, you two have been involved in the discussion and you gave us a, um, a chart here was at the high school this morning discussing this with uh, Mr. Miles, and I understand this is a result of a police uh, surveying 
um, our traffic and coming up with some suggestions as to how we can handle it. In a nutshell, what's happening, uh, and I understand the worst crunch is occurring just before the opening uh, bell of school, uh, that uh, cars are getting piled up in, in um, I don't know if it's total gridlock, but it certainly creates a, uh, an unsafe condition because uh, kids are getting out of the cars and kind of running uh, to make the bell, and uh, we just seem to have trouble getting uh, the traffic out of that area. Uh, what the police are suggesting is that we uh, route traffic, which would take some additional signage as well as some striping and, and some presence, I assume, from the police to help us get this moving to train people to go at, to be exiting uh, and dropping passengers off uh, lower down by the auditorium and to, in fact, um, go all the way around the parking lot. That means that as people are exiting, they're stretched out more, and so there isn't that um, pileup uh, effect around the flagpole. Um, perhaps either Rick or Frank would like to address the issue, because I know they've been watching it. And I Mr. DeFusco has had uh, a number of conversations with the police, and um, I think Chief Pickering is the one who, in looking at this, came up with some suggestions which we think might be very workable. I think in order to really get this matter resolved, uh, we need to sort of get a meeting, which we will schedule uh, immediately between the Public Works Department, the police, the school, and perhaps a board member, um, sort of as liaison, to sort of look at this situation and. Uh, make some agreements about striping and, and where signs might be. Um, it's really a, a, a five or ten minute problem in, in a day in terms of being safe for students to exit cars and get into the building. There are other times during the day when the traffic um, backs up trying to get out on Route 77. Um, but I think to call it gridlock would be to um, over use that term uh, in terms of getting out on 77. I think it is unsafe for kids in the morning. The rest of the time, I think we just all have to learn to be a little more patient in terms of, of getting out of the, of the school. Um, I think the rest of the time, there's plenty of, there's really not a pileup of, of cars or people. Um, we also have, I think some, now that all students have to exit out of the same um, roadway onto Route 77. I think we do also have some concerns about student traffic in cars in the afternoon when students are trying to get out of the school. But I think with the police, uh, we can work all this out. And I think that's what, what we propose that we will do in the next day or two is try to get a meeting so that Public Works can then make some arrangements to put up signs and do some striping as they see fit. The one morning that I did take my son to school, I did observe one one problem which could cause, I could say a possible cause of, of congestion. On the exit road 277, there were two parked school buses waiting to go to the, their, their middle school run. And that bothered me because that was an also another congestion. I left out one key player in this meeting, and that's Charlie Freeman, the bus director. I'm, I, but you're right, the bus traffic. And, and it's not only where they park, it's where they load or unload at, at 7 and at, at, at 2. Actually, the, uh, you know, when the buses are unloading, traffic comes to a standstill because you simply can't go anywhere. So no one moves. People can't even park cars if they're going to stop. So we have a number of, of problems, and, and Mr. DeFusco and I looked this afternoon and tried to find ways of different places for buses to load or unload, and it, it is not simple any longer. Um, and I think that uh, perhaps even we ought to include um, Sue Weatherby for community services because there are times when community services has some congested spots, and parents tend to want to pick their children up um, between the, the entrance of the high school and the road down behind the high school, which is closer to that community services entrance. So I think the meeting's getting larger. But I think really the only way we're gonna do it is for all of us to, to get together. What we've done uh, to this point is confer a lot by telephone and it's sort of a circular conference and it's not as effective as getting us all in the room with some maps and saying, okay, what do we wanna do? So uh, we will see that we get that done. I do have another comment because I've monitored this both before school and after school. And um, I would like to follow up on Mr. Miles' comment about how traffic comes to a standstill. Um, 
I would like to make the observation that not all cars stopped for those school buses. There were 11 violations on Friday afternoon alone. Uh, people don't seem to understand that you cannot pass a school bus whether they're on school grounds or in the middle of the street. There is a new state law that went into effect today that says that all the bus driver or any other person observing the illegal action needs to do is write the license number down and present it to the police, regardless of who was driving that uh, car. The owner of that car is held liable for that action. Um, I stopped three parents Friday in the parking lot and ask them please to wait for the buses to leave because they did not realize that they were not supposed to pass the bus in the school parking lot. So we have some educational awareness of rules and regulations that may be so basic that we've forgotten in the 20 or 25 years since we've been in school. We have students and staff who think they can go the wrong way on a one-way street because it's safe. So that's where the striping will come into play. And I really do, um, think that we all need to have a little more patience. I haven't had a chance to speak to Mr. Miles about uh, one other component to that is an effective tomorrow, the high school buses will be arriving after school five minutes later. This will give students 15 minutes to exit the school. Um, the buses will not pick students up until 2.15. That gives parents and students five more minutes to egress, to leave the school property entirely. It's been approved with all the appropriate um, channels, and they will, that will not interfere in any way with the regular bus schedule for the pickup at the middle school or the intermediate or uh, Pond Cove unit. So that's just uh, a few more things. The problem is not only in the morning. The problem in the morning is with parents dropping their kids off between 7.20 and 7.30. An observation, uh, I try to do this, I don't always make it. But if you could start bringing your students at 7.15 instead of 7.20, um, that would make a huge difference. Uh, I know Mr. DeFusco counted cars. I know the police officer counted cars. And when 80 cars appear in a circle uh, in about two and a half minutes and 120 kids get out, uh, we have a lot of uh, congestion. And uh, if people could please use a little courtesy and common sense um, a lot of these issues might go away. Also, this idea is a good idea. The uh, reason for it was primarily for the safety of the Pond Cove and the middle school students. Um, that objective still is a clear objective. It was not to inconvenience parents of middle school, uh, excuse me, of high school uh, students or the high school students themselves. So I hope people can work and now that they're aware of some of the problems, maybe they could work uh, to individually uh, adjust their schedule two or three minutes and um, maybe the problem will reduce in size. Thank you. Is there a board member who would like to answer? Oh, I, I did want to say we really haven't talked about what's happening up on 77, but there's also people going to work and they're heading over to the shoulder at full speed to pass the cars that are signaling left and uh, the police aren't up there. They're, they're back trying to monitor the front of the school building, and I consider that, because of the speed up there, probably potentially more dangerous than a fender bender, perhaps, in the school building. Yeah, I, I, as somebody who pulls out of Fowler and then quickly makes a turn into the high school, I know exactly what you mean, because I can see them coming in the rearview mirror. That, that's not a new problem. That, that's a problem that's been there, been there for a long time. And, and it may be that we will want to try to restripe the pavement there, but I, I know nothing about that and can't <laughs> even speculate. I, but I agree with you, right that's, that's a good point. And there, there's also a problem in parking at, at athletic contests after school. People are, are going down the roads the wrong way and backing into the parking places. I mean, it's a little bizarre. It was a, we've had a little bizarre behavior in automobiles this year, more so than in the past. So. I think some one-way signs and some other things will straighten that out. But Mazes we, I, do that to people. Pardon? <laughs> Mazes do that to people. I think that's a good point. I hadn't <laughs> thought of it that way, but that's, that's perhaps, a, it's not only puzzling, but sometimes even a challenge, so. Okay. Is there a board member who would like to serve on that committee? Rosemary? Okay. 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 And finally, and very, just very quickly, uh, this is the time of year when the state sends us a report card. Um, you may recall that was a process started a few years ago. It kind of is a compendium of some facts and figures, all of which you've seen through the budget process, through our reports on the MEAs, 
Um, and uh, I don't think there, frankly, is anything, any statistic in here that's particularly new or startling to you. Uh, so I'm just distributing it to you. Um, probably a handy uh, item to put aside into your, your board folder or your board uh, notebook pile. or pile or whatever uh, room that you may have uh, because it, it's particularly handy at that process. Thank you. That's my report. Okay. Thank you. School board subcommittees and reports. Uh, policy subcommittee report. The policy subcommittee met and addressed a number of concerns. Uh, the four that I would like to address are policy manual, uh, adoption, committee policy, uh, curriculum consideration of a curriculum committee or, or uh, dealing with curriculum matters, and then some transportation concerns. Uh, the first uh, question that we addressed was uh, we felt it was time for the school board to initiate the process of adopting the policy manual uh, as supplied by MSMA. Uh, the, it's a fairly lengthy um, product and it's going to take some time to review and adopt. Uh, there are a number of ways of addressing it. Our recommendation was that uh, we do it section by section and, and uh, address section A at the upcoming school board meeting. And there is also a couple of approaches to that. Uh, one approach would be to go word by word, line by line, and make certain that every policy that's in the book is exactly the way we want it. However, that would take a considerable amount of time and would leave much of the policy manual unfinished for probably years, if, if that's the way it was initially addressed. The other process is to uh, go over um, in a somewhat more superficial manner, make sure that we are, can all agree in essence to the policies as they stand, make any major corrections that need to be made and then um, after the policy manual has been accepted in whole, we can go through in a systematic fashion and fine tune policies. That way we would over several months have at least a working policy manual, which, which I think is badly needed for the system. So any discussions or thoughts on, on that point? I concur. Yeah, it sounds to me like the second way is. Okay, so for next meeting we'll address uh, section A and with an, any major changes to address. The uh, second part to that is that we also have uh, the possibility of being in service by an MSMA official, which may be very helpful. We wouldn't need to initiate our review process, but uh, hopefully early on they would be able to um, further explain the thought process that went into a number of the new policies that are in the policy manual, and Connie can, I think, perhaps uh, tell us a little bit more about that option. Yes, uh, Mr. Newland, who is the uh, MSMA official who, who did the review, uh, just to quickly summarize, remember that what he put in uh, was only what you have for your policies plus anything that he added it says suggested new language so that um, exactly we are in fact separating out what, what's already an adopted policy from what is in fact something to review. Um, he is an experienced administrator, um, working, having most of his experience out of state, but um, in a variety of different settings. So uh, I've been impressed with his grasp of issues, and I think that he would be helpful. He is available to come down and sit down either with the entire board in a workshop, which probably would be the way to do it, or in uh, a working session with the subcommittee plus anybody else who was available. Uh, but I think um, that might be one of the things, for instance, for our rescheduled November workshop to try to find a date that he could come and um, that you would be available and that we could go on with that. And I, th I think that would be an excellent follow -up. Okay. The uh, next point was, uh, grew out of the question of uh, developing a curriculum committee. And as had been pointed out earlier, one of the things that we had hoped to do was to establish a policy concerning all subcommittee uh, that may arise from the school board as a whole. And after reviewing um, some suggested languages, we recommended uh, that the board committee uh, language provided by MSMA be used, which is included in your packet, um, with the heading suggested new language. I just want to note that is under new business, um, excuse me, oh, okay. under unfinished, unfinished business as a first reading so you, we can discuss okay. it at that point. Okay. Um, 
the the third agenda or the third uh, area of topic that was discussed also flows from that and, and that regards how curriculum should be addressed by the school board and whether that would be an appropriate subcommittee or whether it should be addressed by the board. Uh, we felt that as uh, in the policy subcommittee that it would probably be more beneficial to have a working understanding of how we were going to address our subcommittees um, before definitively deciding any uh, concerns related to curriculum. Uh, so that's why I was uh, initially uh, hoping to address the, the board committee policy. So my suggestion would be we could either put that under unfinished business um, or we could also address it at this point. Okay, why don't we uh, address that right now? I feel like this would be an appropriate time to do that. Uh, Charlie, last time you had had a concern about um, the policy slash curriculum subcommittee. And uh, I think one of the discussions that's gone on since the last board meeting was perhaps rather than having a policy slash curriculum subcommittee that it would be better for the board to sit on the K through 12 curriculum committees um, and maybe even at some point if we feel a need suggest a committee that we think might be beneficial and, and administrators can go from there um, and that way it won't be narrowed down to a couple of board members doing most of the research and so forth and bringing it back to the board. Rather, every board member will have an opportunity to volunteer to be on those committees and have input and be learning firsthand what's happening as far as curriculum on, on the school committees. Um, so I want to throw that out for, for thought, too. Any thoughts on that, Charlie? My concern was that this, this study subcommittee of policy or study, study policy committee need to set up a format for how we were going to implement our subcommittees. I think this is what I was looking for, mm -hmm. was a, a formal process. And from that, the board then would, would designate what, what specific subcommittees they felt were pertinent and then address any, 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 any situations that arose. So I think you've addressed what I, my concern was. How do you feel about the, where the curriculum involvement lies? I think, I think that's a good suggestion. I think just the policy, having a policy subcommittee alone has a monumental task in just looking at the policy manual and, and getting that in line. And with, with the other recommendation that I think is coming forward of possibly a finance subcommittee, you know, have two major subcommittees and then from that, um, create things as we need them. But I, I, like, I like your suggestion for curriculum. Okay. Any other thoughts about the curriculum work as far as having a curriculum policy committee or sitting on uh, K through 12 committees? One, one additional point to uh, I do think it is a good idea to have active involvement on the committees at the schools, the K-12 uh, curriculum committees. One of the things, though, that I, I continue to feel is needed is a, a, a conscious effort by the board to regularly address curriculum. Um, and where we have policy uh, subcommittee and finance, uh, uh, finance committee had uh, been entertained uh, negotiation, negotiation committees have been pre-assigned during orientation. Those, those, those concepts have been pretty well defined, and, and I think it's certainly um, reasonable to have the school board as a whole address curriculum uh, if, if indeed the, the school board as a whole is very interested in pursuing that. Uh, but I think if we are going to do that, we need to do it on a consistent, conscientious basis. Uh, and, and I would like to somehow see that formatted into our regularly working meetings. Uh, if, if it be a report or um, some some process like our financial report where we have ongoing input and feedback about curriculum so that it's not uh, a, a disjointed process. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it would be important for us to to have uh, the knowledge of what committees are are working within the schools. Rosemary? 
I would just like to support that point and say that um, I would like to see an agenda item, if possible, under the superintendent's um, report, if appropriate, uh, about an area of curriculum every single meeting. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be crisis. It could just be a report. Hopefully, we have no more crises <laughs> in curriculum. <laughs> or anywhere. Or anywhere. Or anywhere. Okay. Well, so then everybody's in agreement that it would be all right to sit on the committees. And last time we had, uh, Mark and Ann had talked about being on the math and language arts K through 12 committees. Um, if there are other board members that would be interested in doing that too, um, let us know. Um, and if you can let us know when those committees will be meeting so that we can be there. Yes, I will do that. Um, let's see, School Space Study Committee, Charlie. I just noticed that. <laughs> so oh. I'm unprepared. I didn't, I knew that, well the thing was I knew that you were going to address uh, the broad, broadening the scope of, of yes, the, it's and that's there. why, that was the only agenda that I felt was, right. so I did not prepare anything. Well, uh, since we're almost ready to unveil the report, uh, this isn't the month when we, or this isn't the meeting at which we're going to, uh, feature it except to remind people that the 29th is a shared workshop day with the town council uh, and there will be a presentation uh, from the architect uh, engineering firm as well as from the uh, school space committee itself um, and I do have an item under new business uh, that has come up and I think that's all we need to do. That workshop is um Tuesday, October 29th at 7.30 in Council Chambers. So please, please come. Will that one be televised? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it will be. I haven't actually uh, talked about that with anybody specifically, I don't think, although I may have. I, I had a quick conversation with, yeah. with the board about that. Uh, I, I see that as a kind of workshop that we should televise because there is going to be a great deal of information. Uh, it's a meeting that a lot of people probably wouldn't necessarily be able to make um, and it's not particularly an opportunity at that point for the public to uh, air their opinions. Obviously we will have such opportunities and there will be, I'm, I'm sure we're not going to bar people from speaking, but it's going to be a very heavy informational meeting uh, because there's a lot of stuff. This is a really uh, complicated report with a lot of issues. And we'll do our best to make them as clear as possible at that time. Uh, and I think the televised um, approach will, will work well to help people who are not there at least begin to understand what some of those issues are. Okay, thank you. Report on Town Center Committee, Rosemary Reed. Uh, yes, Madam Chairman, I would have to ask you if I may adjust the agenda and put uh, items C and D. I'm sorry, I just noticed this. C and D is one report and then I would like to report on my involvement in the community team as a school board representative. Sorry, I didn't notice that sooner. And I will keep my comments um, to a minimum. The town center uh, committee was formed uh, and given a charge by the town council to address uh, basically, I can't remember the square foot, but uh, it's the area uh, defined from Scott Dyer Road to 1226 Shore Road from um, the intersection of Hill Way to Route 77, commonly known as Tarbox Triangle, down to Fowler uh, Road, Old Ocean House intersection. The primary uh, focus of this group is to identify the needs of the town center, uh, which includes the entire school property. And so uh, I am sitting on that committee um, to keep the school board aware of any changes that we may have to make or consider and just uh, understand uh, where the committee is going. Uh, so far <laughs> there's been no discussion that would negatively impact the schools. So all of it will positively affect us. Uh, I did attend a uh, meeting that was held uh, in the Senesta a couple of weeks ago with uh, almost the entire town council, town officials, and uh, we received approximately $15,000 worth of free planning time in which planners from all over northern New England, uh, after having come out on a bus tour of the town of Cape Elizabeth, decided what they would do to make this a real village. Uh, one of the town councils asked them to please pay for those changes. 
but there are some that can be um, identified in easily and without too much expense changed. And uh, our next meeting is October 10th. I will report back at the next meeting of any significant impact that it has on the schools. They loved the campus. That was repeatedly, boy, what a wonderful idea. So uh, between the fields and the schools, and they did wonder why there was a one-way road through it. <laughs> <laughs> did they wonder why there was a road through it, period? Yes, I'm sorry. They, they wondered why there was a road through it. I'm right. sorry. I miss a word or a paragraph here and there. I'm sorry. Uh, and my next report is um, I am the community team representative uh, from the school board. And today there was a presentation by Dr. Lanise Bias to the 7th, 8th, and 9th grade students. Uh, Mrs. Bias uh, came here for the second time in a year. And uh, she really commanded the attention of the kids. Knowing most of those students by first name, it was interesting to watch them sit there for approximately 55 minutes and not move. I never heard a sound. They didn't even cough. Uh, my son said he didn't dare to, but um, the fact is she really inspires young uh, people and also adults. There were many parents there. It was great to see. Uh, we had to go in and get extra chairs because there were so many people there, so it was really great. Uh, her message is positive. It's about motivation, inner strength, love, happiness. Uh, she talks about keys and the six biggest lies there are uh, for students uh, and uh, this age group. She did gear her talk to the middle, age, middle school age and ninth grade age population. Um, her message was a little bit different uh, from the one that she gave last year to the high school. She addresses peer pressure in an attempt to instill hope in the lives of young people and steer them away from substance abuse. Uh, it, her, Illustrations about peer pressure in basketball and offense and defense were just uh, wonderful. She reminds parents and adults that we're role models uh, for today's society. And one of the things that I thought was great was she let the students know that they were, in fact, role models for other students. Uh, her effect was really obvious. Uh, I had the opportunity to, to attend the 7th and 8th grade boys basketball game. I only asked the boys, how did you like Mrs. Bias? How did you like Mrs. Bias? Mrs. Walls, it's awesome, it's great. I couldn't believe it. Uh, one ninth grader, however, did suggest that his seventh grade sister probably shouldn't have heard it because she wasn't old enough. Uh, but I thought that was interesting that he was protecting his sister. Uh, it was okay for seventh grade boys to hear it. Uh, in terms of the school department staff, special thanks should go to Rick DeFusco, Janet Hoskins from Community Services, and Nancy Hutton. <coughs> from the middle school and uh, all the seventh and eighth grade um, teachers and support people were there and it was just a wonderful opportunity. Uh, some of the parents that were there asked me where she was going to be next so they could hear her and I said North Carolina. So they said they'd wait till she came back to Maine. The police department, the Patrolmen's Association, St. Bartholomew's Church, the community team, community services, the town manager's office, the school department through the superintendent's office, the middle school parents association, the high school parents forum, the middle school and the high school administrations all supported this with funds. So it was really a community wide service <coughs> and uh, very well received by the customers. So, end of my report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is unfinished business. Continued review of board's goals for 1991-1992, and Dr. Goldman summarized for us um, the uh, priorities of all of the goals that we listed. Um, numbers one, two, and nine are clear priorities. One is raise the academic performance of all students. Two, to have an evenness among classrooms with learning outcomes slash experience relatively the same in all classes. And nine, encourage involvement of parents, students, and the community in a dialogue with the schools covering assessment of curriculum, setting priorities, particularly a review of system-wide course offerings in light of budget constraints, achieving higher student expectations slash, slash participation, and developing measurable outcomes. Okay. Um, 
improving communication. All three of these issues have been noted as immediate concerns. These are to utilize the citizens of Cape Elizabeth in making long-term goals and developing a vision for education in the next century, work on improved communication with the town council, develop a volunteer core of parents and community members to help out um, substantively in the schools. And under building issues, including space, maintenance, and renovation, um, make final decisions on space needs and convince citizens to support them. Okay. So those seem to be the major goals. Um, did you mean numbers one, two, and five when you say as important and pressing concerns, but yes. not goals, right? Well, I'd add them. I okay. really would. All right. So under budget and central office, one, review the policy manual. Two, review and upgrade the process for evaluating all personnel, the superintendent, administrators, teachers, and support personnel. And five, continue the evolution and merging of career ladder and index teacher pay systems. Review athletic, co-curricular, and teacher leadership duties and stipends as outlined in last year's negotiation sessions. Any comments about having those as our board goals? Any discussion? Uh, um, to the superintendent, um, the goals that came in after the original group, did that change substantially, the uh, recommendations on this? Do you uh, goals that came in after? I, I, I thought originally only a portion of the responses had been in when this report was done. No, I think all comments were, all original comments were folded into the report you have is dated September 8th. Thank you. Uh, in some cases, a couple comments came in afterwards. I checked the wording, and since it's on computer, it's fairly easy to upgrade the wording to make sure that they're reflected. Uh, I think these are quite consistent with everything that I've heard from you, and it's interesting as you hear those, some of, some of those issues are, of course, either already being addressed or are clearly things that we intend to do. So. Even though you listed these at the end of the summer, you can see that they're consistent with the direction in which the system is moving. So I'm very comfortable with One of the things that, that I don't want to see happen is that, you know, we've stated them and they're kind of on paper and then they get tucked away and we don't stay focused on them. I would find it helpful if, if you would take the ones that are clear goals and have those sent to each board member so we can put them on our refrigerator and read them every day. And, and also, can you help us figure out a way that we can have some kind of plan to either, um, you know, have periodical reports or discussions about these goals mm -hmm. or, or set a timetable and, and more specific ways of following through with these goals? Could that be a, a workshop for us, or, or could it, however you would think would be most appropriate to help us manage that? Well, what I would see is that um, every meeting we have, um, if it's on the refrigerator, maybe you want a copy in your packet. Uh, but uh, I think it's important for all of us, myself, the administrators, I've already distributed this and discussed with them to some degree um, the implications for us uh, in understanding and helping you arrive at your goals. Um, and we're not, by the way, ignoring the issues that are on here that have not been, not popped up as priorities, but I do think it is good management to separate out what are the highest priorities and to, it's certainly helpful for us, what do we have to make sure we do as opposed to what we will do. Um, in some cases we will do it anyway, but in some cases it uh, may not be possible. Um, I think that you will find, my intention would be to, to um, perhaps as part of that uh, superintendent's report simply note that the items on the agenda that match goal XXX, whatever, um, that, I mean, that's a very simple procedure, but it would be 
certainly on my mind to do so, and it'd be easy enough to uh, make an explicit noting of it. Okay. <coughs> yes, I was wondering, would this be, uh, would it be possible to publish our goals at the community dialogues, yes, have them available? Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I do <coughs> know that the three schools do have a parents' newsletter, and it would be something that I think that they would all be willing. I was at the Middle School Parents Association meeting today, and I was asked for them. Good. And I said, well, we haven't approved them yet, but uh, yeah. uh, I'll be happy to get your copies. So there is interest in what we're doing and what our priorities are and, you know, discussion of those goals. So. Good. Yeah, that's a real good point. Charlie? I actually would like to see also published some of these that are more minor or discussion or, or um, administrative, um, administrative goals. Um, I'd like to see those published too because those did originate from the board mm -hmm. and it gives uh, a more rounded um, perception of what we're, what we're looking at. We're not just looking at large goals but uh, global goals. That we are looking at the nitty gritty things that are going on in the system too. Okay, good. Other thoughts? Okay. Update on the portables. Yeah, I did include in your packet. I hope I have it. Yes, I did. Right here. Um, it's actually a budget summary uh, to tell you where we are. Uh, we're pretty well finished with the projects. Uh, I haven't seen the punch list yet, but I had a conversation with the engineer told me he was about to do the punch list, so we are really reaching the end of that project. You will note that the funds that we talked about using the um, funds in the budget plus the 71000 was authorized from the town council to use as part of the bond. Uh, we've just about expended those, and we have some uh, additional expenses coming in that will be coming out of our contingency. We have just about enough in the contingency contingency to cover it. So with this project, we have pretty well finished the um, expenditures as we have noted them. Uh, as we get into the construction, uh, the um, building study report, we obviously will be surfacing other issues, but at least this project seems to be virtually completed. And I think it's been completed with a minimum of fuss. I haven't heard any. I've checked with Nancy and with some of the teachers and walked around myself and I thought I would like to say that I think the contractor and the engineer and our own uh, in-house people, Gary Spencer taking a large responsibility for communication and so on, I think it's gone relatively smoothly, would you say, Nancy? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Policy on establishing subcommittees first reading. And in the packet we had um, uh, re regarding the establishment of subcommittees to the board as a whole, suggested new language, and then um, uh, uh, from a, another file, uh, uh, um, the sample of how it's done in another school system. Any, any comments about uh, the policy that's recommended for Cape Elizabeth? Yeah, I noticed. Uh that there are, there is a difference between the two um, two policies. Uh, at least one difference that I noticed was that at Gorham, the uh, chair appointed the chair of the subcommittee, and the uh, the main school management association draft says that each committee shall elect its own chair. Uh, my uh, my recommendation would be that we. We have our chair name the chair of the subcommittee. Other thoughts or comments? Charlie? Uh, just a question to ask Rosemary since she served on the town. How does the town council elect the chair to their subcommittee? Is that an appointment by the... It depends the, what the, the charge town. says. The, char the charge indicates whether it is a town council chair appointment or if it is um, from the, the group. You um, have both kinds on the town council? Yeah. It, it depends if it's a town council original um, beginning and end committee or if it's a standing committee. See, I, having been on committees that were both ways, I would lean towards having the committee elect a chair. But, uh, 
It's three members, right? We're, de we're dealing with three member committees? That's great, yeah. Other thoughts? I, to me, it seems a little cleaner just to, rather than have uh, the three people try and figure out who's going to do it, just have first person, like the Gorham one, um, the first member appointed shall serve as chair. It just seems to expedite it to me. Um, and, and also, it, it's, it, I think it's up to the chair to kind of keep an overview of, you know, who's chairing what and, and how it's all going to fit together. And it seems to me a little more, um, a little smoother that way. Just a thought. Any other? I, I think it's more structured if it's a appointed by the chairman and I think when you have three people and they try to decide among themselves a lot of times it's uh, the, the honor's not there <laughs> whereas if you've been asked to be the chairman you know it's not more of a passing the buck sort of situation I think it, it, it seems to be more structured that way my way of thinking okay um other, excuse me, I just wanted to say, it's the old joke, who didn't show up as the chairman. You know, that, that happens a lot. So. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, especially in a situation like this where we're all overcommitted, I think, I think we need perhaps the, our chairman to look at the total picture and see how she feels that her, you know, her uh, other board members fit in to the whole picture. Not to extend the meeting with anecdotes, but I do want you to know that I did attend a committee meeting as a school board representative, and I was absent, so I was appointed recording secretary. So what Loretta says is very true. Okay. <laughs> so. I won't miss another meeting. <laughs> it okay. was a good report you wrote anyway. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So under B then, um, the committee members shall be appointed by the board chair and the first member appointed shall serve as chair of the subcommittee would be the new language. Um, any other thoughts on the first reading of, of this policy? Okay, then next month we will have our second reading. Okay, uh, the last item under unfinished business is uh, looking at fourth grade enrollments and what is needed there. Okay, um, I really do apologize for not getting this into your packet, but I have tried to talk to as many of you as possible, and I also know that um, obviously the board chair has done the same thing. Um, and we did service this as a problem, obviously, at the opening of school, so um, I would expect that you would not be taken totally by surprise. Um, since we reviewed the elementary enrollments as part of the budget process last winter, uh, we've had nine students added to the fourth grade, at least nine. It could be more than that, depending on when you start counting. At one point, we could actually find uh, 12 youngsters, but again, enrollments do ebb and flow a little bit in the year. But uh, even if it is only nine, that is a substantial number, um, as it notes here, actually 12, uh, even more so. And some of that addition is coming uh, after school started. This is what's alarming us. Um, we are very close to even the state um, maximum of 25. Uh, we have one fourth grade classroom at 26. This is a classroom where we have uh, added a teacher assistant primarily because of some of the student needs in that classroom. And it's not a teacher assistant that is actually working with the other teachers in that group. Uh, it has a more specialized um, focus. So we are now seeing uh, only two classrooms, th uh, really, or three classrooms, where we can add anybody else. Um, if we get as many as five, four or five youngsters in the course of the uh, of the year, we could uh, really be in a crisis situation. The state would probably grant us a waiver, but that doesn't mean that we wouldn't uh, feel pretty bad about the situation. It's our best advice to you that the pattern seems to be established, and it does seem to be growing. Um, and we do feel that if we're going to do anything at all, this is the time to do it. Uh, I do not like going through budget sessions, making decisions, and then coming back with a second guess any more than any other superintendent likes to do that. 
Um, but we were facing what we felt was a series of serious decisions, one of which was to try to spread budget impact across a number of areas, including classroom size. The administration and staff last year recommended that we keep uh, the fifth grade with uh, as small sections as we could, given some of the needs in that class, and to preserve the, the uh, small uh, class sizes at the kindergarten, first and second grade level. Uh, we are seeing some increases at the third grade level, but they are not yet as dramatic as they are at the fourth grade level. Our problems, of course, are compounded by lack of space. And in order to add a section, we are going to have to do some uh, moving around. And frankly, I don't think we can possibly add uh, more than one section, but we could, we do see it as possible to do that. Um, the other factor that I want to call to your um, attention is that in the budget process, we made some decisions. Then, as you know, we do go through staffing. And in this case, we have lost some senior staff and have hired people, uh, certainly not because we were trying to um, generate a budget surplus, but the fact of the matter is you often lose senior staff and do hiring people at a lower rate on the scale. And that has happened this year. I uh, have asked you to check the uh, circumstances in our budget. We do have enough to cover this. In fact, we have more than enough to cover this, and we will be giving you a complete update on that. Um, it doesn't, I don't want to sound like we've generated a huge surplus. We haven't, but we certainly do not need to be concerned about uh, covering this particular request. Uh, the dilemma is, we, what do we do? Do we say, well, we've made a decision. The kids have started school. Uh, let's stay with it. Let's not try to disrupt classes, because if we add a division, one of the first issues that really crops up is who's going to go in it and what process are we going to use in order to make that decision. There is at the, on the um, uh, memo that you have here at the, at the bottom under number three, uh, Nancy has outlined for you a process that uh, this school system used before and it's similar to one that I've used before. Uh, we have to say in all honesty that uh, we know that that's a, a delicate situation. It needs to be handled carefully. Parents need to be well informed. We want to assure everybody that, uh, that the uh, decisions will be made carefully and with, um, with this kind of uh, a step-by-step -step process. It is certainly, however, uh, a somewhat sobering thought to think that we would get to January, might have four or five more youngsters move in, and we are seeing, for reasons I cannot explain, um, families moving in with youngsters at this middle range, uh, and we've already registered a fair number throughout the on co classes since school started. Um, I really think it's a decision we have to make now. We, and if we wait uh, in January when it could become a crisis, I'm not saying it has to, but I don't have a crystal ball. I'm just saying that this is what we have to consider. I would be too late to do anything. Uh, the most we could do at that point would be to hire a teacher assistant and to try to relieve the load with some tutorial. Uh, we have looked at the issue of teacher assistant. Could we solve this problem by adding a teacher assistant? Uh, and I'm certainly uh, willing, you know, you're, willing, you're welcome to ask the administration their thoughts on that. But in our conversation, it seems to me um, one of the things that crops up are the teachers now using teacher assistants. Well, the Cape Elizabeth staff seems, you know, Cape Elizabeth pattern seems to be one of smaller class sizes and fewer teacher assistants. It's not a system that has really worked out procedures of working with teacher assistants. And frankly, to ask teachers to all of a sudden do that, as well as cope with large classes, um, it is not necessarily um, the best way to go. So our recommendation at this point is that we do add a fourth grade teacher. We would have to go through the process here. Um, we understand that you may find that a difficult decision, but it's a difficult one for us too. But we think that it's a prudent thing to do. Okay. Comments, Charlie. Where do you put, where do you plan to put this additional classroom? Well, I'm going to have to ask for administrative help on that one. It's sort of like playing musical chairs, uh, but it is possible. Well, Charlie, that's exactly what it becomes, and uh, at the risk of raising concern, uh, we would need. And I have spoken to staff who would be affected with this proposal. What we would need to do is to um, ask Pam Dalhouse, who is now housed, she is a resource teacher, 
who is now housed on the second floor of the intermediate breezeway. If you, it's directly above my office. Um, that classroom would move down into the area where uh, Beth Dixon is servicing students in the what has been known last year as the uh, intermediate arts area where Mary Jo Thompson had her office and there is a small room in the back there. We were looking to Beth, I mean uh, Pam Dalhouse assures me that she will work with Beth Dixon to make this a central area so that students can be, be, be served well there and she, sh she assures me that this is certainly space enough for the, st the number of students that she serves at one time particularly. It's, again, I say to you, it's certainly not the most desirable of situations, but we are, in addition to facing uh, size constraints with uh, class size constraints, we're also in a space crunch, as I think we're pretty well aware. We as a board are going to have to address that for the next budget year anyway. Uh, absolutely. Through, so. We're so really officially out of space at this point. So that would make seven sections of fourth grade. That's correct. About, we have 21 students per section, approximately. Yes, yes. If you evened it out. Well, now wait a minute. Okay. I'm sorry, I have to address that. That class, the class that would be added, it, it I have to go back and, and restate this. The class that is added would probably not be over 18 students, given the space of the, given the size of the room that that new class would be entering. I don't, I don't think it could adequately address the needs of more than 18 kids in that, that room, really. Excuse me, this is the room next to where Mary, Mary Jo Thompson's office was, to the left of it? Is that, I'm lost. Um, no, this, that room is presently occupied uh, by Beth Dixon That's art. and her students. That, that was the former art room last year, Peter, right. The room that we're referring to as a to have as a general classroom is directly above what is Lyle Kramer's office, the guidance office, right right at the moment. That was I, I'd like to add that was a classroom at one time. That was uh, several years ago, a sixth grade classroom, and Steve Conley that occupied that, that class. Steve Con that That's was a right. Very small class. It's and a small classroom. There's, there's no question. Students in that class. Right. And anytime he did a project. The project was in the middle of the room, and the kids were shoved around the out. It was a very small one. What that would mean, uh, I true. guess, is that you'd have that classroom, that class of 18, and all the others would be about 22. Yes, that, that's why I said we have to back up here and, and go back over the numbers and where, where the students would be assigned and so forth. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to say I support this, and I'd be prepared to make a motion. How are yes, the teachers feeling about this? Are they feeling that, that they have too many students? Are they pressuring you for this change? Or is Very good question, Loretta. Thank you. Um, I've met periodically with the fourth grade team over the last month that we've, prior to school and the month that we've been in session. Um, teachers, it, it's about right now, teachers are all feeling, um, let's say, the pressure of numbers. They've expressed that to me consistently, all six teachers. They are all, to, to, a, to a number, very concerned, needless to say, about having students exit from classrooms. They're very, they're, they're actually um, very, very sad about this. They also, about, let's say, four teachers in particular, are very, very committed to the fact that they believe more and better quality education will happen for, for students within, should they have a smaller ratio. Um, they're feeling that the, the trauma of the, with this, the impact in the next two, next week, week and a half, will be overcome by the success that we feel that we'll experience throughout the rest of the year. And that all teachers said that. They said they felt that once we got over this hump, things would look better for kids because the services would be better as they moved through their year and they begin to experience uh, more teacher time. 
uh, more time. The specialists were actually very, very pleased. I talked with uh, Neen Stanford today. She just was ecstatic. She said, I, I just support this wholeheartedly. She said, I can't. The numbers that we're dealing with in our classes now are just practically unmanageable. What would you do about things like music and PE? How will that schedule fit in? Very good question. When we did this in the, um, the original time that we approached this, that becomes a problem. I have to admit that it does. Students would, at this point, need to work into the six-day rotation, with the exception of the foreign language program. And I spoke with Suzanne Janelle, who would need to pick up, obviously, that uh, foreign language piece in that classroom three times a week for the 20 minutes of instructional time. That would be added in there. That would obviously be part of their, their day and their program. The six-day rotating schedule would now need to be shared. Uh, the six classes would now need to share that, though, that time is, is what would happen, and that's what we did in the past. That's something that should we get your blessing tonight, we will definitely go back, work, invite specialists to look at it to see which, how they can best serve students because they certainly are going to be as aware and, if, and advocating for their programs and times with kids. There was Charlie? a cut in the foreign language last year, uh, positions. Does that mean that we have to increase her? We would somebody? need... If someone's going to be teaching three more classes. Right. Suzanne Janelle would need to be compensated for her three, the three classes that she would pick up. That's correct. It would be an hour a week additional. That's right. I don't right. know what that would be in terms of an FTE, but not well, much. Well, right. I, I just need to say that, and you remember, Nancy, I, I had a fourth grader in 1986, and that made that such a traumatic year. Um, I could bring in a dozen kids that were the 12 that were picked and they still look on it as a, a real slap that year that they had to leave their classrooms and it also affected the other students who lost friends that left their classrooms and the you know the the makeup that delicate balance it was just destroyed and um, I also remember talking to a lot of parents who almost felt coerced into agreeing to let their child leave the classroom. So I, I know it says successful, but, but it wasn't successful. It was really a, a really a traumatic, hurtful time for a lot of people. And uh, if, what, what would be your alternative if the answer is no? Can, can I, can I say, as an alternative, I, one of the things that I've thought a lot about are the teacher assistants. And and one of the things that occurs to me, yeah, I think there are some difficulties with that, but the difficulties are more in staff adjustments than children having to adjust. And as a teacher, if I were facing writing conferences with individual children, small math group work, individual work in whatever subject, and somebody gave me the choice of either having three children taken from my classroom or a teaching assistant who would I could then divide the number of writing conferences and and uh, have the help with the math work and so forth, I, I would choose a teacher assistant. And I guess I'm not clear why that seems to be a, a big stumbling block. Sort of along those lines and, and following up what Loretta said, uh, uh, the, the question that arises to me is what, what's driving this change? And I think if you were to ask, are the parents driving this change? I think the answer would be no. I, I know that, uh, as Laura pointed out, changing ch a child's social situation, that, that takes a lot of adjustment for a child. And I think that uh, the parents, uh, um, unless there are, there are significant concerns being voiced now of feeling their children are not getting the appropriate education, I think to uh, invite the, the possibly very significantly traumatic changes um, in, in mid-year uh, would be a, a great risk. Um, again, and, and, and the question is, if, if we need more service, who would be more appropriate to make the adjustment? Should it be teaching styles and uh, use of assistance that's adjusted, or asking children to make social adjustments, which I think is asking a, a fair amount from both parents and children. 
Um, one, of the, one previous agenda item was uh, asked to be referenced out to parents. And I think that, uh, especially for the parents involved of kids who would be moving, I would be very interested in terms of their preferences. If there are a number of parents who feel that 25 is too much, I would really have my child, prefer to have my child in a different classroom, uh, and parents were comfortable with that, I think that would be terrific. Um, I, but my, I would be very surprised if that were true. I'm unemotionally involved in grade four in that there's not a member of my family in that, nor has there been for three years. I will tell you, though, I was approached by three parents, um, at least three parents, uh, who asked me if I could please look into why their children were all crowded in rooms and why their teachers had uh, 25 and 24 kids in a class. Um, I was, when I uh, spoke uh, at the beginning, I had a motion. Uh, that was not to Claude Blanche accept this recommendation. It was with qualification. Uh, that's because I've done a tremendous amount of uh, investigation on this to find out uh, the pros and cons of several things. Uh, one of the things that I would be interested in doing is uh, we have a um, workshop coming up very quickly in the next two weeks uh, in which we could have a board meeting in which we could ratify this uh, decision if it were uh, made and it seems to me uh, I'm always a person who says have you asked the parents yet um, we may in fact have 18 volunteers uh, hopefully they won't all be from the same class um, there and I'm sorry I wasn't trying to be cute with that but I, I my my point is that we may in fact have uh, children uh, or parents who think their children could be appropriately placed uh, in another situation uh, we're looking in the fourth grade currently is we have two teams of two teachers. We have two teams, I mean, two teachers who do not team. So this would be a third teacher who does not team, which would give three members of that staff something in common, whereas four members of that staff have something else in common. So I saw it, saw it as a, a good balance. Also, um, Nancy thinks 18. I looked at that room. I thought maybe 16. But um, I, I really do think that um, there are uh, some things we can do to, uh, in addition to steps uh, three that were outlined here. But I really do think we have to look at the value uh, to the students and not overlook the value of the fourth grade experience. Um, I also think that it is very important that it not be a reactive, uh, that it be planned that we, you know, work it in. I also think children are much more resilient than we give them credit for if we approach them in a delicate way. And I, I do think that doing this in the fifth, sixth, or seventh week of school is far better than doing it at the semester break. Um, in terms of teacher assistance versus um, a teacher in a classroom, um, I would love to see a new teacher and parent volunteers uh, doing the things that uh, we might be paying a teacher assistant to do. Uh, it's not a perfect world, but that is what I would um, like to see. I'd like to go back, if I might, to a comment that Mark made. Um, in bringing this proposal to board, as administration, we simply felt a responsibility to bring to your attention that there the, the state guidelines were getting delicately close to state guidelines. We're getting very close. We're over what this board in the past has always looked at as a good teacher-student ratio. And uh, keeping that in mind, that was basically one reason that we brought it to you, to make sure that you, you understand that we are bringing to your attention classes are overloaded and we do believe something needs to be, this needs to be addressed in some way or other. I would agree with Rosemary to survey the parents to find out if there is really enough parent mm -hmm. support. Mm -hmm. I agree that these teachers need some kind of support. It's either to relieve some of the, some of the congestion in their classrooms or give them additional teaching support. And I would strongly recommend what Loretta has suggested or Jane has suggested that teachers assistance would be even even one, possibly two, to help with the situation. Somehow the difficulty, uh, I too have parents speak to me about class size and, and so on and so forth, and both as a classroom teacher and an administrator now, I've 
been faced with a situation when parents speak to you about perhaps splitting classes, it's always someone else's child, needless to say, that would be asked to leave a class of that. Um, that I think adds another dimension to it. I, I think most of us don't anticipate it would actually be our child leaving. Having Charlie. seen some of these previously third grade parents last year at a, at a couple of functions uh, put on by the Ponco Parents Association, I think they would be very vocal in how they really truly felt about situations. That. That's fine. I think, as I said at the outset, it's a very difficult issue. It's one that, uh, as a superintendent, I cringe when I get into these things because you really, I personally feel that it's great if we can make the decision in the budget process and stick to it because I'm well aware of the impact uh, of trying to back up and, um, and start over again. On the other hand, I agree with Nancy. We have an obligation to let you know what's going on. Uh, lay it out there for you. These are our options. I don't think we have any perfect option. Um, I would uh, certainly expect not only to survey staff, uh, excuse me, to survey parents, but also to survey staff. Um, they know that we're talking about this, obviously. We have a staff member here uh, who is at that grade level. And um, I think perhaps we can uh, do that sooner than later and, uh, again, look at the administrative, from an administrative uh, recommendation point of view what's the best thing to do again I appreciate your input and in that uh, we recognize that it's one of those situations that we don't know what the best thing to do is all we can do is tell you these are the issues as we understand them um, we could go either way um, and if we go with the uh, I, th I think we certainly have to do something I agree and if we go the teacher assistant route, I just hope we don't have anybody moving to Cape Elizabeth with another fourth grade well, one thing uh, that we might do also is try to figure out what's going on with this, uh, this influx. There are two possibilities uh, uh, for Cape Elizabeth. Uh, one is that uh, people are moving here because of our school system's uh, reputation, and it's easier for them to move here uh, at this particular time because there's very low turnover in houses, prices are down. And uh, so if you're coming to this, the greater Portland area at this particular moment, uh, you can pretty much uh, move into this town a lot more easily than you could uh, than you could have a few years ago. That is, if you have a job. Mm -hmm. The other side of the coin is, uh, you know, there are a lot of people out there that don't have jobs. Uh, this area is quite depressed. Uh, I should not say that. I should say it's in, in a severe recession, and uh, people might uh, conceivably start moving out of this uh, region to other states, which are doing better than uh, uh, Maine and the Northeast right now. And, and I think the way to find that out, uh, to the extent one can find out that, uh, is to talk to some of the real estate brokers and, uh, and try to ascertain what is the likelihood that we will indeed get another six or seven in this class. Because if we got another six or seven, clearly we would have to hire another teacher. Mm. Uh, or well, maybe that's not so clear, but it would certainly make it clearer to me. Uh, if, on the other hand, uh, you know, there's not much of a not much going on in the real estate business, and it's people think it's unlikely that we'll get more than, say, two more fourth graders uh, in the uh, ensuing months, then we we'd uh, th that would be another piece of information that we can put together with the uh, the survey of, uh, of parents. And staff. I think uh, the point about asking uh, real estate brokers where we are in this is certainly uh, a real good one, and especially with thinking of the budget coming up and the difficulty of making these projections. I'm not sure they'd have any real good way of figuring out how many families are moving in with fourth graders. Um, they could probably tell us if they're, they're what the market is for three or four bedrooms, but I don't know about. Well, I think, grade. I think, I think uh, no, specifically fourth grade, you're right, but, but uh, real estate brokers are, uh, and all brokers, uh, are pretty good at sniffing the air. You know, they know which way the wind's blowing. They'll and, find out. Yeah, talk to a couple. Okay. Have, have you ever considered a, like a four or five split? Or oh, a two, yeah, three we talk, split? That yeah. gives you some flexibility in yeah. how the numbers come in. Yeah, we certainly, we looked at that too. Again, I think that part of our problem um, is the, uh, you know, it's, it's space is compounding our problem. The only space we could come up with was a space that's so small that by the time you split two grades, uh, you know, you almost have a tutorial situation. 
Um, that's part of it. The other part, again, is what is the staff used to doing? I mean, what are the things? Because wh whatever we do, if we, if we go this route, we all know, and you certainly your personal experience bears it out, we know that it's a, it's a difficult situation to assure that the new group will, um, will get underway well. And it's, I've seen them ha work very nicely, but I do understand that, that, that it can be a, a difficult situation. Um, I guess I would say that's loading the deck uh, if it's something that people haven't done before. Um, another, another difficulty. I think the key to it working nicely would be a teacher that walks on water. That yeah, you're right. That's exactly that's, what I was sort of just an outstanding teacher to come right, on board. Right, right. It would be difficult. Okay, we, we've done our duty. Okay. New business, joint study committee composition. Okay, this one I think is fairly straightforward. You may recall in the one-year teacher uh, contract we have, we have an agreement to form a joint study committee that will pick up on the work that was done last year in negotiations with also a couple of uh, different types of committees on uh, career ladder. Uh, I apologize to Mark Foray for leaving his name off, um, but anyway. Um, the process that was used, the contract spells out quite clearly uh, for the most part, school board representation, the superintendent, and administra uh, a uh, representative from the administrative council, and Beth Henderson has uh, agreed to do this. We had some, just for your um, information, you may, we did, in fact, have some discussion about this administratively, and at first we thought, well, why should we ask our newest member to take on a difficult task? And the more we looked at it, the more we realized that this was an opportunity to bring somebody in with a fresh perspective. Um, and that we thought that that had uh, had something uh, really positive going for it. So she has graciously agreed to. Uh, she did miss a meeting, but that wasn't that wasn't when this happened. Um, Mary Mary <laughs> Mary Bruns, who will be representing the core committee, uh, Clark Smith, who is the president of the CEEA, and then there the contract specified five teacher representation uh, representatives. Um, and frankly, Mary Bruns, Clark, and myself got together and discussed how we would do that because we thought um, that there ought to be some process that we would use. So we used the, we, we echoed the uh, contract with the five clusters that are mentioned in the contract, K3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 12, and a specialist representative. We sent out a notice to all teaching staff, asked them to um, indicate their willingness and these are, are the people who have uh, um, volunteered and accepted the assignment. Sherry Robinson, K3 representative. Randy Perkins who was actually teaching both at the 4-5 and the 6-8 uh, uh, level but will be representing 4-5. Phil Jewett as a 6-8 representa representative. Gary Lenoy from the high school and Julie Saligas as a system-wide specialist or a specialist representing other system-wide specialists. So that is our joint study committee. Our contract does ask that it be um, accepted by the school committee, so it is appropriate for you to take a vote on that. And it does need to be uh, accepted by the association. I'm not sure what process they will use, but maybe through their executive board, but uh, we can take care of this this evening. Is so, there a, a, a first meeting scheduled for this committee? Uh, there isn't, but it will be ASAP. Okay. Do I hear a motion to accept? Did, did you want to say something? No, I was going to make a motion. Oh, thanks. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. I move to accept the slate of uh, members to the Joint Study Committee. Okay, second. Second. Okay. Further discussion? Postman. I just had a question. Um, when I look at this, I see that only Mary Bruns and Phil Jewett were members involved in the original career ladder design. Is that correct? I uh, don't know if anybody else here would have been. Um, Clark was certainly around at the time. I don't know what his role would have been. I think there, there is one other person. Hey, you will find that if you look back on some of those career ladder plans, that Gary Lenoy was also involved mm -hmm. um, in different things. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Uh, the other item is a very small one on the, uh, as far as uh, time is concerned anyway. Amendment to the Cape Elizabeth School Board Flexible Benefits Plan. I hope someday we really get this all together in <laughs> one piece. <laughs> yeah. 
We have discovered in reading our document that the, uh, the information in there as to when benefits are begun uh, is inconsistent with our practice. So we believe that we had the obligation to make sure that you were aware of that and amended it. My recommendation is that we, we make the language consistent with our practice um, because we do not ask uh, employees to wait six months before they are eligible for medical benefits. That's what the basic piece of this is. They are eligible as soon as we put them on board. Do I hear a motion to accept the third amendment to the Cape Elizabeth School Board Flexible Benefits Plan? So moved. Uh, second. Further discussion? Rosemary? In that motion, can we state what the amendment is, please? Uh, by deleting the phrase, quote, and who has completed at least six months of service with the board, quote, on page two, article 3.1, commencement of participation. Simply deleting the phrase will. My concern is that when we review the minutes, if we have a legal challenge, uh, we may not be clear on which amendment, amendment number three was. I think they're usually attached to those minutes, aren't they? That, that type of document. Right. <laughs> I just wanted to be real crystal clear, that's all. Yeah, but I, I think, uh, you know, some of the minutes that I've, I've seen just recently have had that uh, as an exhibit. But either way. Mm -hmm. Chad? Did we find this or did our legal counsel? Oh, we found that. I think, as a matter of fact, uh, my Eagle Eye secretary found it. I, we've been reviewing. Um, but really, and I don't want to get, you know, it's late, I don't bore you with all the details, but we have been reviewing a lot of forms, and I credit Connie with a great deal of that. She's been extremely helpful on that. We're trying to make sure things are accurate. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, personnel request. And uh, at this point, I have a request for maternity leave. Kelly Manahan uh, is expecting uh, her maternity leave to begin on December 2nd. Um, and uh, she's indicating that she will be taking uh, both a maternity leave, which uh, the practice is if she, uh, up to eight weeks is called maternity leave. And after that, becomes an unpaid leave for child care purposes. And she does intend to take, as I understand it, for the rest of the school year. Um, and to notify us by February 1st if she wishes to request a child care leave for the following year. Um, and we are in the process of making arrangements for that. Okay. What does she teach? She's at the fourth grade this year. She was at the fourth grade. Second. She's at the second grade this year. Rosemary? Yes, I was wondering, are you planning to fill that with a long-term Substitute or contracted per diem? Once this kind of thing would be a long term sum. Uh, although, with uh, our practices, that the long term sum, when you know it's going to be uh, six weeks or longer, is paid on scale. But it is technically a long term sum. Okay. Do I hear a motion to accept the request for a maternity and child care leave for uh, Kelly Manahan? Okay. Second? Further discussion? All in favor? And the last item um, on new business, extending the scope of work of Portland Design Team. Uh, you've had a chance to look at that letter, which really spells it out in some detail. I just want to um, point out that this is a recommendation coming from the School Space Study um, Committee because what we have discovered in looking at the options that we want to present as part of that study, um, our original scope of work to the architect did not emphasize uh, the kind of work that this represents as far as picking up on actual scheduling of students at the middle school and high school. It's particularly important for the high school in this case because he's already done a good deal of the scheduling for middle school. Uh, the point is, is that we see a need to use the space at the high school and without actually running through actual classes, he cannot be as precise as he can be as if he uses the general estimations. That is, he's already given us a good deal of data on the use of square feet of space. But there are some fine-tuning issues uh, 
uh, when you were really trying to, to get, capture the uh, feasibility of space use uh, recommendations, you've got to really run through just how many sections or how many kinds of science classes are we offering, how many kinds of art classes and so forth, and look at not only square footage, but to look at actual classes. So that real, it, it is needed. We would appreciate your support on this. And um, although it does exceed the scope of work and the cost of the original study, I think it really is important. Comments? John? In the recommendations that would be coming forth from, from, this, from the architectural space um, uh, study that was authorized by the school board. One of the recommendations is where we place students in the system to make use, effective use, and to keep the cost down of, of renovations and that kind of thing. And you need to look, if you're going to move students from one part of the system to another, you need to look at how it's going to impact programming that already exists there. And, and I would strongly recommend that we, it would be something that we would have to look look towards as a further study of, of trying to make a choice as a board. So I think it's just, it's just one more step that would make us better prepared to make a, a, a more effective decision. Uh, if we authorize this work tonight, will they be able to start tomorrow and will the report be completed before the 1029-91 workshop meeting? Uh, in the hope that you would uh, uh, approve this, we have meetings scheduled tomorrow, as a matter of fact, at both the middle school and the high school, with the understanding that if you didn't approve it, I would make a phone call. Um, I, mean, I wouldn't want you to feel coerced. <laughs> but that uh, is set up that way so that we can, in fact, get the data back and it would be part of the, you know, I mean, the data at the time. Uh, just when the comments are over, I'll be happy to make a motion. And it's not a big cost, additional cost. No. It's, it, met, it involves just a matter of, of, of a rate per hour for the amount of time he has to put in. Okay. Rosemary, you want to make a motion? Uh, yes, thank you. Madam Chairman, I move that the board authorize the superintendent to engage, engage the um, Portland design team in additional services related to the space school study committee options that will be presented at the joint school board town council workshop on October 29th. Okay, second. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Uh, dates to remember, November school board meeting, Tuesday, November 12th, 7.30, Town Council School Board Joint Workshop, Tuesday, October 29th, 7.30, Council Chambers, Community Dialogue Meetings Regarding the Vision uh, for Cape Schools, Tuesday, October 22nd, 7.30 p.m., High School Cafeteria, uh, Tuesday, November 5th, 7.30 Thomas Memorial Library or Wednesday, November 13th, 7.30 High School Library small group follow-up sessions. Your choice as to which session you would prefer to attend. Tuesday, November 19th at 7.30 p.m. High School Cafeteria large group meeting to summarize major themes. Okay, uh, our last item is consideration of a request by the superintendent to enter executive session for purposes of discussing negotiations with bus drivers and custodians unit. Do I hear a motion to do that? Rosemary? Second? Further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. The meeting is adjourned.